Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, I have five sparkling wines in front of me, four of them white, uh, one of them not white, and uh, four of them made from a familiar champagne varieties, uh, and one of them not made from a familiar champagne variety, but we'll come to that right at the end. Uh, we will start in uh, England uh, with Hattingley Valley Classic Cuvée 2011 Brut, carefully selected blend, Chardonnay Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, um, and we're in Hampshire here, so let's give this one a whirl. There's a, sounds strange, a dumb refinement about this, but what I mean by that is it feels like there is this, um, a, a bit of the, the cooked apple, a bit of the pear in there, uh, a bit of nuttiness, uh, but there also feels like there's a little bit of um, restraint and uh, uh, just a, a elegance that is going to emerge as the wine unfurls in the glass. Um, and also, I mean, 2011, it's, it's two years old. I can't imagine it's been bottled all that recently, uh, all, all that long ago. Um, so um, it almost feels like a wine that, yeah, needs a little bit of time in bottle to uh, show better than it is now, even though it does smell refined. Let's taste it. Well, I just had a look on the back label and I was thinking, God, it's, it's picked up a toast in us very, very quickly. Uh, but it's actually been a part of the, the, the wine's been aged in an oak barrel. So there is this toastiness. Um, uh, there's also this really quite sharp, tangy uh, apple, cooked apple. Um, if you do an apple charlotte and you have, uh, you have apples that are stuck to the bottom of the, the sponge, and uh, it's that interaction between cooked apple and ever so slightly, northern word here, thoddy uh, cake mix that's just not quite set but is still rather tasty. Um, uh, maybe that's going to be a little bit on the sharp side for, for some people but I think that as it uh, matures in the bottle um, I think that, uh, it, that that sharper edge will calm down and the rich edge will come more to the fore. As it is, pretty classy wine and um, for a debut vintage, I think, I think it is their debut vintage, um, very impressive. Um, if any, if I have any reservation, I would almost wish they'd been able to re um, leave it on the on the lees in the bottle for a bit longer, uh, in order to um, uh, yeah, just get it get it to uh, get it extra yeasty complexity and, um, and and calm down just a little bit. But um, economics talks, and um, and as I say, it's pretty good. Um, one number two, uh, we are. I'm not quite sure whether we're in Chablis here, but um, uh, Simone Fevre, uh, Cremont de Bourgogne, Brut, P100. I don't know what P100 is. It sounds like an official form you have to fill in. Blanc de Noir. Uh, I, I don't know whether it's 100% Pinot Noir, and I don't know whether it's uh, from vineyards uh, um, in Chablis, which is where Simone Fevre make their, uh, their, their, their wines. Um, but uh, anyway, let's give it a whirl. I know that uh, there are some places uh, in the north of Burgundy that aren't um, part of the Chablis region, uh, but uh, which grow a lot of the grapes for, for Cremont de Bourgogne. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of Chablis grapes, um, but, uh, but a little bit of those ones from uh, uh, slightly further to, um, further to the east. But give it a whirl. Now this smells more simple and sherbety. Um, it um, it doesn't feel like it's got quite that uh, richness and toasty finesse of the Hattingley. Um, it smells like it's going to be quite nice and um, juicy and fresh, but um, yeah, it feels on the simple side. There's a slightly um, some some Chablis have this uh, uh, ever so slight cheesy element about them, and in, in small amounts it's good. Uh, in large amounts it's cheesy. Um, here it's just they're hovering in the background. Uh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure what vintage this is based on, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was based on a similar vintage to uh, uh, the Hattingley. It feels young, tight, crisp. Um, what I think is different from this compared with the Hattingley, I think the Hattingley has got higher dosage. They put a little bit more sugar in just before they bottled it to round out the uh, acidity. Uh, here they put less in and as a result the acidity is poking out a little bit more. It uh, doesn't feel uh, as, as rich and complex as the Hattingley. It's okay, but um, not as good. Wine number three. We are going all the way over to the other side of the world to uh, not quite which, uh, sure which bit of southeastern Australia, uh, but this is Tyrrell's um, traditional method, method Pinot Noir Chardonnay. Uh, so Tyrrell's is based in the Hunter Valley, uh, but I don't think they'll be getting their, their base wine for sparkling uh, from there, but um, I'll see if I, if I find out where it's from. I'll, I'll flash it up on screen. 2009 vintage. Give it a whirl. Well, I'm not sure um, 
what vintage the Simone Fevre is, but if this, so let's say, say the first two are 2009s, this is two and a half years older because it's Southern Hemisphere, and it's got that extra, uh, it's, it, it's starting to, ve to develop some uh, uh, of that ever so slightly toasty, yeasty character that comes from age rather than, as with the Hattingley, a little bit of um, that judicial oak ageing. Um, it's, it feels like it, there's quite a rich base wine there, uh, but it feels like there's, um, it, while the fruit's got ripe, it's not got as ripe as, I mean, I remember some Australian sparkling wines 25 years ago. It was like someone had got a big fat Chardonnay and given it the bike pump treatment. Here, it feels like it's a more subtle character. I'd be, in, yeah, I'll be very interested to find out where this is from. Anyway, let's taste it. And they've done a really good job there. Um, what, what it's, um, I was talking about dosage on the uh, the, the, the um, Simone Fevre and saying they probably added put less sugar in before bottling than they have on the Hattingley, and maybe they could have done with a bit more. On this one, the 2009, uh, I think they probably added roughly the same amount as uh, as on the Cremon, but because it's a, an older, uh, riper wine. Um, it's coming across as far as better balance. So you get this richness and yeastiness and you get the fruit flavours, but then you get the slightly savoury elements, uh, that, that ever so slight marmite yeastiness of, of maturity. Um, and you're getting that richness rather than richness from uh, uh, the, uh, the the spoonful, the Mary Poppins spoonful of sugar. Uh, I do like that and uh, I think that's pretty classy. Mm. Like. Um, Next or final uh, white sparkler is uh, from Miguel Torres in Chile, so from Curico Cordillera Brut Pinot Noir, um, and oh it's got 2012 vintage, maybe I should have done it earlier, but um, hey it's a bit late now, let's give it a whirl. Bit of red fruit here, um, there's uh, a bit, bits of red currants in with the apples and, uh, uh, and the, the, the citrus and a bit of the pear. Young, frothy. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's method champenoise, but um, it smells. It smells decent enough, and uh, smells like it's going to be a refreshing, uh, friendly glass of wine. Yeah, juicy, slightly sherbety. Um, yeah, I, I'm friendly. That's that, that's uh, the best word for it. I don't think it says um, it has the levels of ambition of the previous ones, but in just being content in being a rounded, honest. Uh, simple sparkler, um, it does its job really well. Um, so if you want your complexity, spend a bit more. If you want your uh, the, the, the fresh, uh, it's almost like um, one of the, it's almost like pig pool de pinay with bubbles, um, uh, which is for me is a compliment. I mean, I, I like that it's, it's got almost a savoury saline edge to it, and this red fruit character, um, and um, I, I, I like that. Yeah, I do like it. They've not, um, yeah, it, it, it feel, it's on the subtle side, and uh, um, I, I like subtle. Well, I'm sorry, I'm subtle myself. Um, final wine. Uh, so this is the slight oddball, or oddball. The others have been champagne varieties and have been white. Um, we're still in Miguel Torres, and are we still in Curico? Um, I'm not sure, because uh, Secano Anterior, uh, Interior, uh, so, but we're with the Pais grape, um, and, which is, um, has been mistreated in, in Chile and there's a few because uh, it, it grows like a weed and uh, it's uh, it's been sort of like oh, the lowest of the low. A few people are trying to do something a bit more ambitious with it including Torres uh, with this 2012 sparkler. Let's try it and see whether it lives up to um, uh, the levels of um, interest that the winemakers have shown in it. Well, you probably can't see the colour against my pink shirt, but um, Provence Rosé is um, it, it, a lot of it is this colour, and I get a similar sandy character that I get in quite a lot of Provence Rosé when I smell it. Um, there's a little bit of red fruit richness, otherwise it just smells like it's going to be simple, young, fresh, honest wine. Ah, oh, it's it's okay. Um, it's got um, a, a crispness about it. It's uh, it's got a juiciness about it. Um, a little bit of um, maybe a bit of plum in there. Maybe a little bit of um, uh, of red currant. Um, maybe a touch of apple as, uh, as well. Um, it's not it's not big on flavour. It's but it's a nice drink. I, I prefer the Cordillera, and uh, there's others earlier that I prefer uh, quite a bit more. Uh, but um, for it's I would say it was the best sparkling pies I've ever tried. It's also the worst sparkling pies I've ever tried. It's uh, uh, there aren't all that many of them around, as you'll gather from my uh, from my comments. But um, 
reasonable set of five wines and uh, stars for me i like the hattingley and i like i like the the, the tyrrells uh, and then uh, the, then the, the, the torres cordillera the other two good enough and i'd very happily uh, sup a glass or two of those but uh, it was the um, yeah no, I, I think if, I, if you were to offer me a glass at the end of this toss up between the hattingley and the tyrrells see you soon